In this video, we're going to talk about how to go from electrical potential difference to electric field, or to go from electric field over to electrical potential difference. We'll start by assuming that you've been given the electric field as a function of space, and somebody's asking you to find the change in the voltage as the particle moves from one point in the field to another point. The way to do that is that the electrical potential difference between two points is the negative of the area under an electric field position graph. So if you're given a graph of the electric field as a function of position, we find the area and take the negative of it. So here's the electric field shown. You see the electric field in Newton's per coulomb. I want to talk about that as well. A Newton per coulomb. I could multiply the top by a meter and divide the bottom by a meter. That would be a Newton meter per meter coulomb. But a Newton meter is a joule. So it would be a joule per coulomb meter. But a joule per coulomb is a volt. So the electric field's units are Newton per coulomb, but they're also volts per meter. So when we're doing this type of thing and not talking about forces, we prefer to think about them, the electric field in volts per meter. Now when you take a volt per meter and you multiply by a meter in getting the area, then you're going to end up with volts, the correct unit. For this problem, to break get the area, I have three shapes. I have this triangle, a rectangle, and another triangle. The top of all three of these is at 8 kilovolts per meter. So I just find the areas of each one of these shapes. The area is one half the base of the triangle, 2 meters. That's this distance right here, times the height. The height is 8 kilovolt per meter. The meters cancel. Plus, the base for this rectangle, that's one meter. And its height is eight kilovolts per meter. It's another eight kilovolts. And then the width of this triangle, one half times one meter, and its height is eight kilovolts per meter. And again, I'm left with kilovolts. So the area would be equal to eight kilovolts plus 8 kilovolts plus 4 kilovolts is 20 kilovolts. That's the area under the curve. But remember, what that really is is work per charge. Potential energy per charge is the negative of the work, so it's the negative of this area. So delta V is minus the area. And so the change in voltage was negative 20 kilovolt. So if you've got a plot of electric field versus position, all you have to do is find the area into the curve, and you can determine the voltage. Now, some curves are easier than other curves, of course. So one of the more famous type of curves is an electric field between two charged plates. So special case. A constant E field. So now we have something that looks like here's E and my field is some value and I'm talking about going out to some distance D then delta V would be minus ED. This is found in the parallel plate capacitor. Parallel plates produce electric fields that are uniform, assuming the plates are fairly large. That means that the electric field is constant and you have a rectangle. But this is simply a special case formula. In general, the solution is to get a plot of it, whatever the shape of the field is, and to find the area in the curve. Now, if the curve is some sort of curved shape, 
then you're going to have to set and do a bunch of little rectangles or triangles. Now that may seem like a lot of work and be difficult, but with modern spreadsheets and computers, it is easy to approximate because they can add up lots of little rectangles as long as you tell them how to do it. So today, we can work very complicated shapes in order to design new products using the advantage of a computer. Let's say we turn the problem around now. Let's say instead of the electric fields, you know the voltage or electrical potential, and you plot that. So now you have a voltage position graph, and you instead you want to find the electric field. Well, for those who have been calculus, you know that finding areas in the curve is called integration. And the inverse of integration, such as the inverse of squaring something, when you inverse the squaring of something, you get the square root. The inverse of integration is called differentiation, and it's the slope of the tangent line. Well, for those who are not in calculus, you'll just have to remember this. The electric field is the slope of the tangent line on a voltage position graph. This is very similar to what we did with acceleration to velocity back at the beginning of the semester, at the beginning, or beginning of the year. From voltage, I'm sorry, from acceleration to velocity, you find the area in the curve and you get the change of velocity. But if you want to go from velocity to acceleration, you get the slope of the curve, the slope of the tangent line. And that's what we're going to do here. So here they asked me, what's the electric field at 1 meter and 2 meters? 2.2 meters, I'm sorry. So at 1 meter, I simply am asked, what's this slope? Well, you can take any two points you want and find the rise over the run. Well, this rise is 8 kilovolts, and this run is 2 meters. So for that slope, for that slope, the electric field is the negative of the slope. And so it's minus 8 kilovolts over 2 meters, or minus 4 kilovolts per meter. And that's at x equal 1. Now this is a one-dimensional problem, so what we're saying is the electric field is minus 4 kilovolt per meter I hat. If you want to deal with another one of them. By the way, I realize in my original thing I should say is the negative of the slope. I left out the negative here. If you want to do another place like right here, then you're looking for the slope of this line. The slope of that line is zero. So this is at x equal 1 meter, E equals 0 volts per meter at x equal 2.2 .2 meters. So to get from electric field to electrical potential difference, take the area into the curve. To get from electrical potential to electric field, find the slope of the line. And in each case, you got to multiply that result by a minus. All right, there's a negative. What that negative sign says is that basically objects fall downhill, at least positively charged objects. Let me show you what I mean. If you talk about potential energy, and let's say we're talking about gravity here, gravitational potential energy, the gravitational force is down. And the force per charge, which we call G, is also down. It points from the higher potential energy to the lower potential energy. That's where the minus sign is. This is going from higher to lower, while potential energy, of course, goes from low to high. So they're in opposite directions. That's the reason for the minus sign. 